and this welcome back this should be the second video you're watching what I'm going to do is quickly go over um, OSHA's uh, record keeping and this is a presentation that I found online so um, not mine not mine at all I think I got it from the OSHA website actually so there are some changes in OSHA record keeping the idea that I'm talking about this now is this is kind of the most basic form of when someone gets hurt there has to be a record made and then it's supposed to be investigated and there's data that can be analyzed and reported so um, this is all under 29 CFR 1904 so you can look this stuff up and I do have some forms you can look at to kind of familiarize with it but this is OSHA's you know mandate that if someone gets hurt to a certain severity uh, you should investigate it by completing the OSHA form 301 um, and the results of that or a summary of that is put on the OSHA log which is the OSHA form 300 and then at the end of every calendar year uh, all the entries into the OSHA 300 form or the log itself should be um, tabulated and analyzed and then put in the the main results the primary results the column totals the tabulations rather and even the incidence rates calculations should be entered onto the 300 a form which is the annual summary and the annual summary is then reviewed by a member of top management and then they sign it and then it's posted from February 1st through April 30th of every year so for three months February March and April um, and that's something you can see on the forms um, but recently in January 1st there was a change in there was a there's a there's a paragraph under 29 CFR 1904 that if you your company incurs a fatality someone dies uh, while at work you're required to call your local OSHA office within eight hours of finding out about that and then they'll send some out and do an investigation the previous standard also said that if you have three or more people hospitalized then you're also supposed to call OSHA within three hours or sorry eight hours um, however that has changed and what does hospitalization mean well I think it was covered in an earlier lecture but hospitalization means you were admitted the new standard now says that if you have anybody hospitalized you should contact your local OSHA office within 24 hours and then they can send someone out there were also some other qualifications for the 24-hour notification of your local OSHA office such as an amputation and an amputation means um, basically enough of a body appendage was cut off and it will not grow back um, uh, also if you lose an eye um, the, but also the amputation does include that if someone is injured to the point where they go to the doctor and the doctor's treatment is to amputate it's also reportable so there I just mentioned basically the three forms that are required under OSHA and I talked a little bit about the recording uh, who has to keep who is covered by OSHA record-keeping requirements well um, you have an exemption for employers with 10 or fewer employees so if you have 11 or more employees you're required to keep it and this is at any point during the year also if your company's um, NAICS which is the North American Industrial Classification System if your code falls under the low hazard exemption and you can see the list on the OSHA website then you're not required to keep it as well um, but if you have a a reportable incident where someone gets hospitalized or someone dies I believe then these exemptions are um, uh, null nulled and nulled and so therefore you are voided and you have to then keep the log from there on out here are the forms I previous, previously mentioned the OSHA form 301 is the incident report and we'll, we'll take a look at that or maybe I even have it posted the OSHA 300 form is the log in which you basically summarize certain points from the report goes in the 300 log at the end of each year you tabulate everything in the log and you put it into the 300 a which is the annual summary and that again is reviewed by some member of management who then signs it and it's posted from February 1st through April 30th of that year of the the following year what cases are recorded well injury illnesses that has to be work related has to meet certain severity criteria and I had really kind of mentioned that before what is considered injury and illness an abnormal condition or disorder not an exposure but basically signs and symptoms don't really call you know, de designate it would be one uh, whether it's work related and here are some qualifications for it you know the there the nine the 29 CFR 1904 standard has the largest um, 
frequently asked question section of any other OSHA standard. And so a lot of people have asked questions, does it should be recorded, shouldn't be recorded. And I really try not to get into that mess because if someone was exposed to something that caused them harm, it should I believe it should be investigated because maybe we got lucky. Maybe it kind of fell lower on the severity scale. And if we do nothing about it because, well, we're like, oh, it's not reportable, so therefore we won't investigate it. Well, it could result in something severe before. And the thing is we could have prevented it had we taken it serious and investigated it. So that's my attitude towards it. But from an OSHA reportability standpoint, it doesn't have to be put on the log if it doesn't meet certain criteria. So here's some of the severity criteria right here. And these are, I think these are uh, columns uh, G, H, I, and J. Um, G, H, I, J, that sounds correct. Um, Loss of consciousness does not have a column in itself, but if anybody loses consciousness on work, even if it's because they fainted, you need to investigate it and maybe you won't have to record it. I was correct. So here's a look at the at the 300 log, at least the top of it. You can see there's columns A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, and then 1 through 6. And you put the company information up on top, and this is then kept usually by HR, but work comp could keep it, could keep it or um, if there's a work comp coordinator, rather, but then also the safety person could keep it. But it's usually kept in HR. So you have a, you have a designated case number by the company, employee name, their job title, date of occurrence, or when they reported it, where it occurred. Column F has way too much information just for a single column, but we can talk about that later. Uh, and then you put one check mark under between G and J. If there's days away from work, whether it's restricted, you put those days in there. Then you check off one column under the M's. Well, it goes to M, but M is six, right? Uh, so death, days away from work, remained at work, it's job transfer, or other recordable. So those are the four classifications. And you always check to the highest severity. And here they're just kind of showing you how people enter things in. Again, it's only one check mark. So you could have days away from work and restricted, but you check it as a days away from work incident, or case rather. And you can see yeah, they're filling it out. They're doing a pretty good job. And then at the end of the year, you add up these columns, and then you put it on the 300A. Other reporting criteria, so if you're in the healthcare, needle sticks and sharps, uh, you don't have to put the individual's name on there because uh, we're starting to get into um, FERPA, I believe it is, is that right? Where people have um, privacy at uh, for their medical condition. So if they were stuck with something, you don't know if it's an infectious uh, bloodborne. Therefore, you don't have to put their name on there. That can be uh, now put there, um, there's hearing loss, if you have 25 decibel standard threshold shift, it's it's uh, recordable. Tuberculosis is another one, but that's another one where you don't have to put the person's name. So you can read all this stuff in the standard and in the um, forms or the documents I've posted. I'm, I'm, I'm going a little bit too long here. Here's the 301. You can read through that. Um, I believe it tends to blame the worker. Here's a picture of the 300A that gets filled out so you, you tabulate what's in the columns. Um, and here's the other side of the 300A. You keep these forms for up, up to five years. And if you make them digital, a digital document, like an Excel document, you can keep them for 10 because it's not really taking up space. Um, and then there's, a, there's other requirements for the forms and how long you keep it. But five is the minimum. Here's other resources you can check out, and I do recommend you check these out because there's a great information on the, on the OSHA website. But I did give you a lot of documents on D2L to help you out. So that's it. I'm going to stop this recording and do the final one.